My freshman year of high school, a friend of mine had to write a report about World War II for world history class. We had a little bit of creative freedom, so she decided to write about the aftermath of Pearl Harbor and interviewed her grandparents who had all been alive that day. She and I wanted to learn what it was like for her Japanese American grandparents during that time. As you may have learned in school, on December 7th, 1941, the Japanese Navy attacked the U.S. Naval base at Pearl Harbor in Oahu, Hawaii, which caused the U.S. to declare war on Japan and join the Second World War. Out of fear of espionage, the U.S. government rounded up Japanese Americans and forced them to what we call internment camps. Between 1942 and 1945, around 120,000 Japanese Americans who called the United States home were held at these camps. But this isn't just something that I know about from history books. My friend shared about how this personally impacted her grandparents who were sent to internment camps. So it's personal to me because she's my friend and one of her grandparents went to those camps and lost everything. Her grandma was detained in one of those camps, and instead of being able to start college, she never got the opportunity to go after the war, which affected her for the rest of her life. And her dad's parents? They met in the internment camps and got married, and they were released, which sounds like a happy ending, right? Except they lost everything before the war, including their property and their businesses. Though they made the best of it, the hurt and injustice and trauma that they experienced continue to shape them for the rest of their lives. Oftentimes, people do not know that Japanese Americans were held in internment camps and experienced injustice. I can relate to my friend's story and her family history because injustice has been a part of my story and my family's story. So here's the thing. We've been talking about injustice the past couple of weeks, which we've defined as, oh, things in our world that are not right, they're unfair, or they're unequal. It's painful to experience injustice. And it makes us all ask the question, why doesn't somebody do something? It's even worse when injustice is ongoing, systemic, and constant. We started this series talking about how God sees and cares about what's happening. God is anti-injustice, and a part of following Jesus means that we care about the things that He cares about, and that is enough for us to do something. So maybe you hear that and you think, oh, that's great, but what about me? If you've been the victim of injustices like racism, oppression, discrimination, or prejudice, then you know what that feels like. And if you haven't, you may have heard stories about real people and their experiences. So if you felt that way, you may be showing up each day wondering, how do I handle injustice when it's happening to me and not just around me? Or maybe others of you are thinking, that's not me, that's not my story. I get that, but I wanna challenge you to shift your perspective too. As a family, when one of us suffers, we all suffer. So this is a good opportunity for you to hear how your family has experienced what injustice feels like. And it's really important for you to lean in and practice what we talked about in our first week. Be curious. So if you are experiencing injustice right now, or you've experienced injustice, what do you do? What do you do when you feel like you're all alone in that? With that in mind, I wanna tell you a true story about three guys and what happened to them. There was a Babylonian king named Nebuchadnezzar who was very powerful and he conquered and captured Israel. And one day he built a giant golden statue that stood 90 feet tall and ordered everyone to bow down and worship the statue whenever they heard certain music playing. If they chose not to do as he ordered, then they would be thrown into a blazing fire. The Bible tells us that there were three Jewish men named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who were worshipers of God and refused to bow down to the statue. You could probably guess that the king wasn't thrilled by the news, and so he ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be brought to him. He gave them one more chance to bow down and worship the statue when the music was played, or they would be thrown into the fire. But these three men stood their ground. They believed that God could rescue them. And even if he didn't, they were devoted to God and did not fear death. What an incredible example of courage and faith. 
So of course, the king is enraged and orders the fire to burn seven times hotter than usual. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are tied up and thrown into the fire. The furnace was so hot that the soldiers who threw them into the fire died simply because they came near the flames. Now look, I get none of us have been thrown into literal fires recently, but I think we can agree that this feels unfair. And many of us do know what it feels like to be treated unfairly, to be discriminated against for our skin color, to be treated like we're less than because of our family's socioeconomic status, to be held back because of our gender, or considered less important because of something we have absolutely no control over. And if you've experienced this, you know it can be scary and frustrating and sad. And so while in the furnace, I'm sure they felt all of those things. Now, let's continue with the story. I want you to see what happens next after they were in the fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. And Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire and the satraps and prefects and governors and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched and there was no smell of fire on them. Now, there are many Bible scholars and researchers who have opinions about this story and who the fourth man was in the fire. Was it God? Was it Jesus? Was it an angel or was it someone else? I don't know the answer, but one thing is clear. In a moment of extreme injustice, they were not alone. God did not abandon them or leave them to suffer on their own. In the same way, you are never alone when you face injustice. Let that sink in. When you experience injustice, you do not have to face it alone. God cared about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and made sure that they were not alone in their suffering or their injustice. Did things change eventually? Yes. Did the laws change as a result of the injustice? Yes. But don't miss what happened even while they were suffering. God cared for them. And in the same way, God cares about you and does not want you to be alone when you face injustice. Maybe you hear this story and you feel the injustice part. Maybe you are so tired, so hurt, so burned by things that you've experienced that you don't know where to turn. I want you to know that you don't have to be alone. God is with you. He hears you. And if you are processing that for the first time or you just don't know what to do next, here are some steps for you to consider. Talk to Jesus. He cares, maybe even more than you realize. Share your feelings of frustration, confusion, or hurt. Remind yourself over and over that you are not alone. And remember, He will send others to be with you. Talk to your group leader or talk to a trusted friend or adult. Even if you think they won't understand, keep talking until someone does. Consider talking to your family about getting help from a professional counselor or a mentor who can help you process the injustice you've experienced in a healthy way and begin to heal. Keep moving. The guys in the fire did not give up. Let's be honest, you shouldn't have to do anything about the injustice that's affecting you. Others should step up. Generations older than you should have figured this out by now. It's unfair. All of that is true, but at the same time, doing nothing isn't always helpful. So you keep moving. Some of you, however, may have heard that story and thought, I haven't really experienced injustice. Does that mean I'm like the evil king who caused the injustice? Maybe, or maybe not. Or perhaps it makes you like the people in the crowd who stood and watched while all this was happening. We all participate in injustice in some way, often by allowing it to happen while we watch. 
Maybe you didn't throw somebody in a fire, or maybe you laugh along when you hear a racist joke, watch people get bullied, and you don't say anything, or listen to music that's degrading to women, or shop from stores that use child laborers to create their products. If that's you, I want you to know that you can talk to God about that too. In Psalm 139, the writer opens up and asks God the most beautiful question. See if there is any offensive way in me. Start there. Ask God to help you see ways that you've participated in injustice. This is so important because the truth is, some of the people you care about the most, your friends from school or from small group, have been on the receiving end of injustice. And maybe for the first time, you see it differently and you care differently because of how it affects them. Let it become personal to you. When injustice happens, it is painful, but you don't have to do something alone. Not only is God with you, but so are the people in your small group. That's why we have small groups. We want you to have a group of people who are for you. We want you to have a group of people who are listening to you, praying with you, and learning from you, and cheering for you. In your small groups, the conversation you have today has the potential to be one of the most honest, personal, and important discussions you've ever had. If you've experienced injustice, think about how you can let the group know that you need support. If you haven't experienced injustice, think about how you can listen and genuinely care for someone in your group. This may sound like a lot right now, I get it. Even if you don't talk to your whole group tonight, I hope you'll talk to your leader. They signed up to do this because they wanna be here for you. And maybe today they can be a real human reminder that when you experience injustice, you don't have to face it alone.